Right, remember the name Nicola Coughlin because I keep on forgetting her name. She's so famous, she's so lovely, she's so wonderful. Sorry, Nick, I keep on forgetting your name. Anyway, last night on BBC Children's In Need, we saw a two minute clip from this year's Christmas special, not seasonal special, not holiday special, but Christmas special of Doctor Who, Joy to the World, starring Shuti Gatwa as the Doctor and Nicola Coughlin as his temporary companion for this Christmas special. Shooty felt more like the Doctor in these two minutes than he did all last season in season one. And with someone, with a co-star, he actually had chemistry with. I love Millie Gibson. You know I love Millie Gibson. You know I was so excited about her casting. I saw so much potential in it because I thought she was outstanding in Coronation Street. But actually, if I'm honest, she wasn't very good in Doctor Who. I wasn't overly convinced by her performances. Sorry, Mills, I love you, but I wasn't. And the writing for her was pants. She barely had a story. Her character was barely fleshed out. I know they did that crap with her making it snow, but look how that concluded. It was terrible. Millie Gibson just wasn't great at all. And the writing for her wasn't great. I'm kind of thinking she was only there for her looks, um, which isn't good, by the way, because we're in 2024 and that shouldn't be the case. But Stephen Moffat has written this Christmas special, Joy to the World, and in two minutes, Shooty Gatwa suddenly feels like the Doctor. Because all last season, I felt that Russell T Davies is not in love with Doctor Who anymore, that he's fallen out of love with Doctor Who, and you could tell with the episodes that he wrote. But with Stephen Moffat, because Stephen Moffat was very tired in the end of his era as showrunner of Doctor Who. He was getting criticised by the fans, it was very difficult for him. The BBC wouldn't allow him to quit because they couldn't find someone else to run the show. He got tired and he became frustrated. But ultimately, a tired Stephen Moffat gave us a great final season of his era, by the way, with Capaldi. I still think there were some great moments in there and Bill was a great companion. So I still enjoyed it. So a tired Stephen Moffat can still give you great Doctor Who. I'm not so sure, not so much with Russell T Davies. He seems tired of Doctor Who. He's fallen out, I mean, seems to have fallen out of love with the show. He doesn't seem to have any new ideas. He seems to hate us, the fans. Um, so, you know, it, for me, right? And I'm not saying, I'm not suggesting that Stephen Moffat should take over the show again. I'm not sure if that's his strength, but I think he should write as many Doctor Who episodes as possible. Boom was a really great episode. Mostly, some people didn't like the pacifism element and the anti-religious element of it. And yeah, I think maybe he went a bit too far with that. Not that I'm religious and I don't care about that stuff, but hey, it's the kind of divisive world we live in today isn't it? But he's a great writer and he loves Doctor Who and he's clearly got a vast amount of ideas for the character. So if they don't want to give it to somebody new, you know, give it to Moffat. Now, it's very interesting that Russell T Davies, as the showrunner of Doctor Who, is not writing this year's Christmas special. This is the first time since the show returned in 2005 that the showrunner hasn't written the Christmas or seasonal special. RTD did it in 2006 with the Christmas Invasion. He did it with the Runaway Bride. He did it with um, Voyage of the Dam, the next Doctor. Um, was it the end of time, parts one and two? Then Moffat did all his Christmas specials. Then, I mean, what could you call what Chibnall did Christmas specials? But he did them. He was calling them holiday specials because he's from that kind of school of villainy, isn't he? So this is really kind of, I think it's the right thing to do by RTD. Clearly, totally out of ideas. He knew he couldn't give us a great Christmas special, so he gave it to Moffat. Bringing Moffat back was a good idea because Moffat is someone we know. We know he knows and understands the character. We can tell that he still has a passion for the character and, you know, a passion for telling Doctor Who stories. And as I say, in two minutes here, Shuti Gatwa felt more like the Doctor. I don't know if that's the director and the writing, because clearly Moffat didn't direct. Direct Now, 
you know, Moffat's wanted to direct for years. It's a shame. I think Moffat should write and direct a Doctor Who movie for cinema, by the way. I'd love to see that happen. I'm a Doctor Who fan. I want this show to work. And it hasn't worked for a long time. They cast a woman who didn't earn the right to be on the show. She got the, she got the role because she was Chris Chibnall's friend. And then they did the fake audition so she could pretend she earned the right. And she was the best one. She wasn't. There was other women who deserved that role. And, you know, were more, you know, more doctor-like. But I don't know if any, whoever would have played Chibnall's doctor, what they could have done with the kind of writing and kind of arc he was giving them. You know, Jodie Whittaker never stood a chance, really, with the direction he was taking her. And then it's even worse, last season with Shooty Gatwa. It seems to me, when you're a diverse actor playing the Doctor, they try and wrap you up in cotton wool, a narrative cotton wool, as I've said before, and avoid the Doctor being comp complex, complicated, selfish. The Doctor is a selfish character. In the very first ever episode of Doctor Who, he kidnaps two teachers because they've seen the TARDIS and he wants to keep them quiet. I mean, he even looks like he wants to kill them at one point. The Doctor isn't Clark Kent. He isn't pure-hearted. Right, sorry, they. They are not a pure-hearted character. And we've got to be clear about that. You've got to put the complexities back into Doctor Who. And I don't care who's playing the Doctor at the end of the day. I don't care. It's got to be... They are selfish, you know. They drag people with them because they're lonely and put them in danger. The Doctor is a complicated character, isn't the perfect person and doesn't always do the right thing. And just because you're played by a woman or an or a actor of colour doesn't mean all of a sudden you're going to be this perfect figure of morality. And this is what they've gone, got wrong with the past two Doctors. So hopefully Joy to the World will be a much better episode. Now, you know, I want to quickly go back to DC because we've got some lanterns uh, or a lanterns update now they've cast some woman to play john stewart's love interest apparently she's um, equal to any man and she's as capable as any man we all know what, what's going on with damon lindelof in charge of lanterns i think this show is going to be a disaster i not only just a disaster but a woke disaster i can see it now i have no confidence in this show whatsoever and my last kind of thought of the day on this video is this hey wb it's not 1978 anymore S the superman 78 superman the movie is the reason i went to drama and film school that i, I, I bought a, a burnt out old theater here in iron Apple cyprus and formed my very own amateur dramatic society and why i'm writing my film franchise, Saving Judy Garland, and its sequel, Saving Norma Jean. I wouldn't be doing any of those things. I wouldn't have fallen in love with DC and Superman and all the DC characters and film and scripted television if it wasn't for Superman 78. But here's the thing. It's not 1978 anymore. And since getting rid of Snyder, they've been obsessed with this bright, colourful aesthetic. It hasn't worked for them. It's led to them making a bunch of flops. I keep on getting annoyed by that picture of David Cronswell in the Superman costume where he's smiling and you can just see his head on location. And they think that's all they need to do. They, would, they showed us some interview with Gunn and the cast of Creature Commando saying how funny it is and how great the adult humour is. Funny, funny, bright, colour, blah, 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 blah. You need depth. It can't just be about funny and colour and optimism. You actually need good characters. You actually need a story. And that's what you're actually lacking here. And yeah, James Gunn, DC Studios, WB. It's not 1978. And Snyder and Goya and Nolan understood that within the development of Man of Steel and they made a bloody good contemporary movie. A Todd Helbing in the development of Superman and Lois understood that and made a great contemporary Superman show. Very gutsy to move Superman and Lois to Smallville, but it worked. You make it contemporary. You do your own thing. Brian Singer, Joss Whedon, or, you know, Berg, you know, Berg and Johns, Walter Hamada learn the hard way that inserting colour and humour doesn't make a great movie. You need more than that. But they still keep on making the same mistake time after time 
of the time. And it'd be very interesting to see how Superman works out in July. I'm starting to think not very well.